Welcome back to the channel lads. This morning we have done about a 50 minute journey to Crouch End which is just on the outskirts of London and this morning we are carrying out an EICR. If you don't know what an EICR it is electrical installations condition report. So we've just pulled up and we're going to be taking you through the process of carrying out the report. So first of all why do we carry out these reports? So these reports are basically like a safety check really that's how i sort of see them we need to make sure that the fuse board the electrical installation the whole installation as a whole the fuse board the wiring everything accessories is up to a certain standard so we basically have a tick criteria where we do different codings which is uh, c1 c2 c3 and fi so c1 is like immediate danger C1's pretty much need changing straight away, if not as soon as possible. So this is like life threatening. If you do this, if you touch it, you're going to die basically. So that is a C1. So a C1 could be a blank in a fuse board because if you put your finger into a fuse board, touch the bus bar, you can get electrocuted. So C1 is the most dangerous. So C2, so C2 is classed as potentially dangerous. So this is obviously something that's not as bad as the C1, but it still can cause harm. Number three is a C3. So this is improvement recommended. So this could be uh, no RCD protection on a lighting circuit in a bathroom or special location, no RCD protection on a socket outlet. So that is what I would sort of put down as a C3. This is everything that sort of needs bringing up to the standard it's not dangerous you're not going to die from it straight away it's not potentially dangerous but it's improvements that you need to make to the installation to bring it up to the standard and then fi is further investigation so this might be in a locked room where you can see there's a circuit in there but you can't actually get to it to test it to have a look um so it needs further investigation you haven't got the access to get in there so yeah they are the four codings that we go by and that is what we need to tick off and make sure they're up to a standard. I think, obviously, when I've done my 2391, the electrical inspection course, um, testing course, I think a lot of it is up to opinions. Yes, they've got the NAPIT code breakers book, which I have a look at and I read through to make sure that I am just ticking off the right bits. But I think a lot of it is down to... Uh, personal preference and things like that obviously there is a lot of electricians out there that might argument have an argument that that is different so that that shouldn't be a certain code but that should be a certain code just to the way they've sort of done their course and they've been brought up as electrician they're going to see things differently but i always feel personally if it's in that code breakers book then that is what it should be coded there's no point of them bringing out a book and having a special tick sheet if it has nothing to do with it. So my personal opinion is if I go off that and I make sure I go off that, then I can't go wrong. And that is how it needs to be. At the end of the day, we are carrying out these checks to make sure it is one safe. The two, that is everything is up to standard. Times go on. Yeah, it might have been done in the 1960s or whatever, but times go on and they need improving. You need your RCD protection on your socket outlets. You need your uh, metal consumer unit. You need your fire rating. It's just a load of different things. And for me personally, I think bring it up to the standard. That is the whole point of carrying out the checks. What is the point of carrying out the checks otherwise? But yeah, that is enough waffle and that is basically the basics. But now we're going to jump inside and have a look. Um, I like doing these because you don't know what to expect. Uh, I've literally been told to press the buzzer, first and second floor communal. No idea what to expect. So yeah, I'll take you through it in a minute. Finally, made it in. And we're just having a look around. So this is sort of the basement area. So this is where the main feed comes in for the communal area, which I'll show you in a minute, but this is the basement area we're just having a look at. It is full, full of cobwebs, bloody hell. But not too much going on down here, to be fair. You've got a um, bit of tray, a few lights, and that is it down here. Um, bit of earthing, bit of earth bonding, nothing major down here to worry about, so 
what we're going to do is show you the communal fuse board and things like that that we need to get tested and then get cracking with it a lot of people might be a bit overwhelmed with what's going on in that cupboard and all the different distribution boards but simple thing just break it down board by board and just go one at a time just make it as simple make your life easy and that is the best way of doing it don't get too overwhelmed with what's in front of you things like that we've written out the db schedule in the pad we've got that sorted for this distribution board and this distribution board but this board is just fed off this three phase board anyway and then so is the kitchen db but first of all visual checks before even taking off the fuse board cover we're just going to go through the visual checks so obviously it's a metal fuse board which is good but this one is plastic plastic no rcd protection either on any of the circuits we've got all heater circuits they're not socket outlet circuits but they are doing some heaters but no rcd protection no rcd protection on any of the lighting circuits but the basement one um also we've got no cover on this distribution board but it is inside a lockable cupboard so we just had a walk around the property and there's actually not too much um that's wrong with it to be fair you see it a lot 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 worse properties but there's not actually too much we walk around all the accessories look pretty good they all looked uh, in good condition all the lights there's only one light that's sort of hanging down from the ceiling but we could probably prop that up today um and then other than the plastic fuse board underneath the stairs in that cupboard i think that's gonna have to change and put some rcd protection on it as well other than that I think it's not too bad to be fair the intake looks pretty good they've got earth bonding on the water and things like that so that's all covered so now we're going to just get into actually testing the fuse board and getting some results down to make sure that side of it is all good as well so yeah not a bad little start moment of truth let's see what this fuse board's like First test ZE at DB. So we're going to test all three phases between Earth, Neutral, and Live, and then see what we get. Because it's three phase, we need to take the highest reading from all three of them, and then that will be our ZE at DB. 0.08. Right, so we've done the PFC and the ZE, and the problem with the PFC was that it was, ah, bloody hell. <laughs> the problem with the PFC, it was coming out at, um, with three phase, you need to double it. So whatever result you get, you need to double it. And it was coming out about 8.10. And some of the breakers, they're only rated to 6KA. So we're gonna have to get them changed because they're not actually up to the standard of a three phase distribution board and taking the braking capacity of a three phase feed. So yeah, we're gonna have to get them swapped over as well. So that's one of the things we picked up on. But now we're just gonna go around the, with the test arc, getting all the ZSs, uh, things like that, R1, R2s, and just getting the results because obviously the installation's already been livened up. We don't really need to get R1, R2s in as such. Some things we can't turn off, so we're gonna have to get ZSs. So we're just gonna run around, get ZSs, and we've actually got quite a few fuse boards to do. So we've got the three phase one to do, we've got the heating one, we've got the kitchen one, and another one on the first floor we've been told about. So four fuse boards that we've got to get tested today. So I'm gonna quickly run around, get all the ZSs, get all the points, and then um, I'll catch up with you in a bit. Also, the thing I wanna check is the kitchen DB, that goes up through this trunking. So we're gonna take this trunking off, but it just looks like a bit of a, Twin and Earth maybe, 10 mil Twin and Earth. I think it's probably, yeah, it's probably about 10 mil Twin and Earth. So we might have to see if that's in containment the whole way up because if it's not, if it's in a wall, that cable really needs to be RCD protected. Okay, heating board all done, nothing really to pick up. The spurs are all okay, no damage on the spurs. Um, all the ZS has come out fine, so got an Earth there, that's great. Um, obviously the only thing is plastic fuse ball, no RCD protection so and it is in a fire escape as well so this is their only way out if there ever is a fire so I think I'm gonna have to recommend them 
a fuse board upgrade to bring it up to the fire standards to bring it to that metal enclosure um, RCD protection as well and then we have got a number three same thing again new fuse board walk around have a look so that's the water heater that's the isolator for it all in trunking all looks pretty new all looks decent it's out of the zones there's no shower or nothing in here got a fan isolated there so yeah have a walk around have an inspection uh kitchen area obviously this socket here pretty pretty much does look 300 mil away from the sink so we just double check that with a tape but yeah that's fine and then that's already tested that's in the communal board downstairs socket socket no cracks no visible damage so looking all good now we start carrying out the actual testing so we're just finishing off testing this fuse board and there's only a few little things it's like way goes up in the ceiling behind the light no enclosure no whisker box or anything like that to single insulation and up and down the stairs up and down the stairs it is a nightmare testing on your own especially in a communal area oh mate but first ring con of the day so let's walk you through it don't need the probes we want the crocodile clips and then we just want to null the leads So put your tester on your continuity setting and then it'll beep like that, click it to zero, zero the leads off and then you're ready to go. So the end to end test you just clip it onto the end of the cable and then you should get a reading so we are getting 0.03 and then your lives should be exactly the same because they're exactly the same size cable, they're doing the exact same loop and yep exactly the same 0.03 and then your earth should be 1.67 times higher which do the maths that's probably about right 0.06 so let's quickly do the maths and show you 0.03 times 1.67 0.05 so 0.06 pretty much there so that is the reading we're looking for. So the reading wires, absolutely bang on, spot on, perfect. So I had to quickly whiz through that last one because uh, time was getting on a bit and filming everything was just making that a little bit longer and I need to get home to that. So that last fuse bolt, the concern, obviously same again, RCD protection, plastic fuse bolt. Um, it's in a public area, it's in the fire escape route. It needs to be upgraded really socket outlets up to 32 amps not on rcd protection so yeah also just sort of uh double checked a few things with uh nap it as well rang them up they were pretty good to be fair they said exactly the same thing the heater fuse ball that needs upgrading to rcbo's because it needs rcd protection it's buried in the wall most of the cables go up into the ceiling and then into each wall so it's buried in the wall it's open to the public and um, yeah, it needs RCD protection. So that fuse board's gonna have to get upgraded. Another concern was the sub main that was going into the kitchen fuse board. So that was like a 10 mil twin and earth. I followed it up through the riser and then it must go through the floor and then into the wall. I see it coming out at the back of the fuse board in the kitchen. So where that hasn't got any me mechanical protection, it's a bit like that should really be on RCD as well. But, but if I put that on a RCBO, then the RCD main switches, when they trip, that's going to trip down there. So then it's just going to be an absolute palaver for local isolation. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to think about that, obviously. It might be a case that we replace that for an SWA cable. So then it has that mechanical protection because there's no rcd protection and we need either rcd protection or mechanical protection on that sub main so yeah it's um there's a lot to quote up lads there's a lot to quote up loads of little bits as well sort of like box lids not on um obviously the way goes in the ceilings for the lights uh what else did we have uh 
Yeah, we had the way it goes in the ceilings. Um, breakers in the three-phase fuse board need upgrading because they're only 6KA and they need to be at least 10KA because the PFC was 8. So, yeah, there's a lot of messing about, a lot of quoting up to do. So I am going to head back home. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, a sort of run-through of the condition report and what how we do it and what we get up to. And... Yeah, there's no shame in sort of double checking as well with your Napit, uh, NIC, anything like that. If you're not sure on something, it's always good to get a reminder from someone and just double make sure. At the end of the day, you've got to provide this information to the client of why you're doing the work. And at the end of the day, you're the one signing it off. So you need it up to that good standard. You're not going to miss anything off because at, you're putting your name to it. But I hope you enjoyed it. I will catch you on the next one. Um, yeah, it's probably going to be a very long vlog, but I will catch you on the next one. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. And yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Stay grafting, lads.